Hey guys, Brickman117, welcome back to the channel and my review of the Halo Infinite Mega Construct set GNB25 Warthog Rally. This is a 314 piece pro builder set and a continuation of the two in one build line that Mega Constructs have going on for the Halo Infinite series. The main build is the latest incarnation of the UNSC Warthog as featured in the upcoming Halo Infinite game and the alternate build are simply listed as a watercraft and a jetpack. The set comes with four figures consisting of the Master Chief, a UNSC Marine and two Jackal Freebooters. Weapons wise you get two plasma pistols, one SMG and an assault rifle. Before we get stuck into the review I do need to disclose that this set was in fact sent to me free of charge by Mega Constructs for review purposes so thank you very much to Mega Constructs for that. Okay then guys, so let's take a look at this Warthog. Now of all the sets that Mega Constructs have sent me so far, this is one I've been looking forward to putting together the most. And for one reason in particular, this new suspension setup that Mega Constructs have come up with for this latest version of the Warthog. And we'll talk more about that in a bit more in depth very shortly. Mega Constructs did release images of this suspension showing it off on their website a few months back in pre-release. So it was obvious that we were in for some kind of treat and a redesign. But what wasn't so obvious is how much of a redesign the rest of the Warthog has gone through. The build process almost seemed alien compared to previous Warthogs that I'd built. Now, I don't have every Warthog Mega has produced, but of all the ones that I have built, none of them seem the same as this. So it was a really refreshing way to put a Warthog together with a lot of pieces that I certainly haven't seen used in a Warthog build before. So let's take a closer look at this new suspension layout and how it works. You can see straight away that there's some new custom pieces involved here. And there's also a use of existing pieces in there too. Now I know some people aren't big fans of custom pieces because it limits what else you can use them for. But as far as I'm concerned, if it's for a good reason, then I'm all up for it. And that good reason here is it finally gives us the suspension on the Warthog I think we've all been waiting for for around 10 years. Now over this time that they've been creating these Warthogs they have changed the suspension setup a number of times with varying degrees of success but I've always felt they've never really quite hit the mark until I put this together and it's painfully simple but incredibly effective at the same time. I would say the only weakness in this system is that it is very dependent on that rubber band in the middle there. If you were to lose it or break it, you're gonna have a very saggy warthog. So simple solution, don't lose it or break it and you'll be fine. But in all fairness, I have to say, this is by far the most impressive and effective functioning suspension setup they've ever produced for one of their Warthogs. Moving on, another thing that I'm particularly pleased about is that they decided to stick with the same shade of metallic green that they used for the Frost Raven line and the 10 year anniversary set or at least it looks like it's the same green. I can't say for sure that it's 100% the same green, but when you offer it up against some of those sets, it certainly looks the same. Now I'm particularly pleased about this because being a mock builder, the longer they maintain the same color of their blocks, the more blocks you can amass for building mocks out of. When they chop and change the colors too regularly, you don't get enough of a chance to build up a decent stock of a certain color. So your mocks can end up like a bit of a patchwork quilt, which I'm not really a big fan of. And another reason I'm pleased that they stuck with this color is because if you want to display some of your sets or create dioramas, then you can do this. You can offer them up alongside each other, as you can see here when I put it alongside the Frost Raven, and they look like they were made to go with each other. They complement each other so well. So again, for me, very happy with the color they decided to go for with this hog. Now, if you're thinking what I'm thinking before I put that Frost Raven back on the shelf, is it capable of carrying this hog? Well, here's your answer. It's certainly not designed to go on the Frost Raven from what I can imagine, but as you can see, the uh, Frost Raven quite happily picks it up off those side steps with just two of its grab bars. So again, like I say, you can see here, these two vehicles really do complement each other being in the same color. 
OK, then, so let's take a closer look at some of the finer details this Warthog has to offer. As you can see, there is a printed UNSC emblem on one of the gun shields. There's also a one by one printed tile to resemble the light on top of the windscreen. Moving on to the interior, you can see they've put this small piece here to act as a grab rail for the passenger, which I think is absolutely brilliant. I really like that feature. Moving over to the driver's side, you can see they've got a very nice printed console as well as what I assume is to resemble a handbrake or it could possibly be a speed controller. I've never driven a Warthog so I don't know. Under the windscreen, I believe they've tried to resemble some sort of engine detailing but again, I'm not familiar enough with the inner workings of a warthog to know exactly what it is they're trying to create there. In regards to the seats for this warthog, they've gone back to something I believe they've tried before, which is the buildable seats uh, in a tanned color, which I do think really suits this color warthog. And on the rear of the hog, you've got three fuel cans, which I expected to be in just red, but they're not the same red as you would get with the warthog resistance set or any of the other previous sets that come with fuel cans they're actually a very metallic red the same sort of red as you get the spartan in that comes with the 20 in 1 scorpion tank from the 10th anniversary line so they look very nice against that green before we take a look at the figures and the alternate build for this set i just want to come back to this redesign that i mentioned earlier on in the video Although it is clearly a warthog, some of the redesigns are more subtle than others. For example, the bonnet area is much flatter than we're used to with new pieces, a new way to create the front of this warthog, which at first glance, I wasn't 100% on, but when I offer it up against some of the older warthogs, I think it's definitely a step in the right direction. Even more standout than that, is what they've done underneath here. This is the first time from what I can see where you've got this chassis that really dips down both at the front and the back. It gives the pro side profile of the hog a completely different look to all of the older hogs. Now I will say it does seem a bit empty around here but we haven't really seen that many of the in-game warthogs yet so we don't really know whether this is just a direct reflection of what 343 have done with the Warthog for Halo Infinite. So I certainly wouldn't knock it for that, but uh, I will be keen to see how closely this resembles the in-game hog. I can show you with some older hogs here what I mean by the underneath of the hog. You can see here, this one, there's just nothing going on. It looks, well, it, it just doesn't look as good in my opinion. The way they've they've created these angles here for the chassis. Just, I think it's a huge step in the right direction rather than just a flat bottomed warthog. You can also see here with the forge hog as well, it's just a complete flat underside to the hog. Even the most recent warthog run, now excuse the state of this warthog run, it's been cannibalized for the ultimate warthog so there's not a lot left of it, it looks a bit like a beach racer. But again you can see there's there's the, the underside is completely different to this new warthog which is what I mean by it's a complete redesign, everything, this section, this section and this section is all built completely differently. So yeah it's a definitely a, a refreshing new take on the warthog. So taking all of those facts into consideration and also allowing for the suspension, which I think is great, I could do that all day, I think they've they've really done well. This is just improvements all around. The few bits that I'm a little bit unsure of may just be a reflection of the design choices from 343. One thing I will say, I don't know how sold I am with the buildable seats. I do quite like the detail you get on these kind of seats which were just recently used for this Warthog run set. So I don't know, I'm not really sure whether I prefer this seat or this seat. You guys can let me know which ones you prefer in the comment sections below. Okay guys, so let's take a look at these figures and we'll start with the UNSC Marine. Now I mentioned this in the Recon Getaway review. I am super impressed with these Marines for unnamed generic 
figures. I think we've really struck gold here. Mega Constructs listened to the community about what they wanted, and I think they delivered with bells on top. Now, if you've got the Recon Getaway set, you'll already have two Marines. This Marine is a third different Marine. In some respects, it's very similar. For example, the torso and the legs and the feet and everything are the same, but this guy's got his sleeves rolled up, which gives him a completely different look, which I big fan of it just the customization of these marines is almost endless and that's before we open up the unsc marine gear pack now other small differences between this guy and the marines that you get in the recon getaway set is the shoulder pads are slightly different here the helmet's the same but also the head is a different head the light skin tone head that you get with the recon getaway has got facial hair this one is without so already just with these two sets you end up with quite a lot of flexibility as to how you want to display your Marines. And obviously you can take the helmets off on this Marine as well, just like the other ones. I'll just quickly touch on one other thing before we move on to the next figure. And that's the height debate that tends to be going on about these Marines and the fact that they are slightly taller than the Spartans. And whilst I do get what people are saying there, it's really not that big an issue for me. These Marines, as I've said, have got so much going for them. Once you've amassed many of them and you start interchanging their armour and their heads and all sorts of things, I think to be hung up on the fact that they're marginally too tall, I just don't really see being an issue. They've got far too much going for them for that to be a reason to be unhappy with them, in my mind. And if it came down to Mega Construct saying, well, you know, you can have them like that or not at all i would take them like this every day of the week because as i say as far as i'm concerned mega constructs have done us proud with this line of marines okay then here comes the big fella now i've said this a number of times in past reviews that consisted of a master chief figure that i think this is my new favorite master chief figure and guess what i'm going to say it again I think this is my new favourite Master Chief figure. This guy looks absolutely amazing. And when you bear in mind that he's only two inches tall, the detail that they managed to cram into these figures on every little piece of armour, just looking at his boots and his thigh armour, his shoulder pads, his forearms, his torso armour and the helmet, everything is just, it's so well detailed. It blows my mind as to how they can give these tiny little figures this level of detail. And when you consider that you're paying barely $30 for the entire set, I don't think anyone can argue that they're not getting good value for money when it comes to the Halo Mega Constructs line. I will say I'm not blind to the fact that these figures aren't perfect. They never are. Of course, they've got blemishes. You get various little paint dribbles every now and then on the right hand side of my figure's visor. The, the paintwork isn't quite as tidy as it is on the left-hand side, but if you're looking at this now on your phone or a monitor or even a TV, he's huge. He's, he's not that big in real life. He's only two inches, so for mass-produced stuff, they're never going to have 100% perfection on every figure, but as far as I'm concerned, standard is more than high enough. One other thing I did forget to mention on the Marine was his SMG does have the guide rail on top, just like this assault rifle, so you can fit the added attachments. As far as I could see, none came with this set, but obviously they do chuck them in in various sets here and there and armor packs and so on. So it's good that most of the weapons are now coming with those rail attachments for future add-ons. And finally, moving on to the Jackal Freebooter. You get two of these in the set. Both come with a plasma pistol and their own personal shield, of which have got a very nice marbled effect to them. So you're unlikely to get two shields that look identical. Now, this is a new design for the Jackal. They've really thinned out the torso and the arms and also the, the head from the previous generation super articulated Jackals. Now, whilst I think most of this is all a step in the right direction, when you look at the images from in-game Jackals, I think this is the closest that they've come to recreating what they look like in-game. Although I do find where the head goes onto the neck pin, it does look slightly awkward. I'm not sure whether they could have done much here because you need to be able to move the head around to be able to pose it in various different angles. But I think maybe if the neck ball joint 
pillar was the same color as the skin tone of the jackal, I think it would go a long way to suppressing this slightly awkward gap between the body armor and the base of the headpiece. So to summarize my thoughts on the jackals, I do think Mega Constructs have done a good job here. I'm just not a huge fan of the jackal. I mean, they're a pretty ugly looking creature and not something that I tend to want to spend a long time looking at. Although they have done a very nice job. As I say, you've got the paint application on the teeth, the eyes and the hair. So they've done their job well. And I'm glad to have them because they do have a place in the Halo universe. I just think I'd rather spend a bit longer looking at the Chief, to be honest. So yeah, there we go. Let's just look at the Chief again. Now, before I end out the video, I just want to very quickly show you the alternate build, which once again was a very pleasant surprise. The build process was surprisingly satisfying and you end up with quite a nice little boat and the jetpack for the Chief as well. I just think it's just fun. I've said it before in the Recon Getaway review, it's not something that I would necessarily leave on display because I'd rather have the Warthog built. But I think Mega Constructs are doing a very good job here at teaching people how to build on their own because they use various different techniques in building the boat than you use in the Warthog. So you're learning all the time how to create your own builds, which I think is a really important part of what these sets are all about. To summarize my thoughts on this set, I think it's another good one. I'm really pleased with the Warthog and the figures, even the Jackals, so much so that I've already placed a second set on order with Amazon UK. And that reminds me, many of you have been asking where you can get these sets from. I've put links to all of the sets currently available on Amazon.com and Amazon UK. So if you guys are interested in getting any of these sets, by all means, take a look in the description of this video and you'll find the links to all of them. So that's just about it from me for this set. So as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next time.